hello learners welcome we shall be discussing about the second part to depreciation relating to the methods of charging depreciation in the earlier part you learnt about what is depreciation what are the causes of depreciation the factors affecting depreciation and the various objectives or aims with which the depreciation is provided in your financial accounting records now in this part we shall be learning about the methods of depreciation which are namely the straight line method and the diminishing balance method what are the merits and limitations of both these methods and how is straight line method of depreciation different from the diminishing balance method so let us start with learning about the methods of providing depreciation as we learned in the earlier part that depreciation is an expense which is to be charged to your profits every year till the useful life of the asset the relevance and the objectives also we had learned there now there are two methods of providing depreciation one we call it as the straight line method and the other is called as the diminishing balance method so let us now understand the first method which is the straight line method now as the name suggests straight line method means a method in which the amount of depreciation remains constant or uniform from year to year so the amount so calculated it does not change from year to year in fact it remains same so that is why this method of depreciation is also known as a fixed installment method or the original cost method because depreciation is calculated on the original cost the depreciable value which we had learnt in the earlier part so the amount is calculated every year on the original cost of the asset so depreciation of each year under the straight line method is calculated as the cost of the asset minus the estimated scrap value divided by the number of years of the expected life or the useful life of the asset so this amount which we calculate as depreciation is going to remain constant it is going to remain uniform so that is why this method is referred to as the fixed installment or a straight line method now let us understand this concept by taking a small example on this a machine was purchased on let's say 1st january 2011 for rupees 1 lakh and its useful life is 10 years after completing its useful life the machine will be replaced and nothing would be realized from it so the scrap value is zero it is decided to charge depreciation on this machine at the rate of 10% per annum by the straight line method so we are required to calculate the amount of depreciation for each year during this useful life of the machine so the useful life of the machine is 10 years now going by the formula that we just learnt about the cost of the asset minus the estimated scrap value divided by the number of years of the expected life of the asset we would be able to calculate the amount of depreciation so the asset was purchased for 1 lakh so the cost of the asset is 1 lakh and there is no other installation or other cost defined to us so this becomes the total cost of the asset minus the scrap value so we have no scrap value in this divided by the useful life of the asset which is 10 years so 1 lakh divided by 10 gives us an amount of 10000 so as is evident from 2011 to 2020 for a span of 10 years the amount of depreciation so calculated as 10000 is going to remain same or it is going to remain consistent and it is calculated on the original cost so the amount remains uniform it does not change from year to year so that is why this method is a fixed installment method now what are the advantages or merits of using this straight line method of charging depreciation first merit is that it is a simple method the calculation of depreciation under this method is a very simple you are not using much calculation and since the amount of depreciation remains same it remains constant so it is easier to calculate and it is also easier to understand 
So, the second merit associated with this method is that the asset is completely written off. That is, the book value of the asset is reduced to either its scrap value or zero at the end of its useful life. Now, we talk about the limitations or demerits of straight line method. First is, it is difficult in computation. Now, what happens is that in case the business uses one single fixed asset or a single machinery, then it is easier to apply the straight line method. But if it is using various machines having different lifespans and the computation of depreciation then becomes complicated because for every individual machine, you will have to calculate depreciation separately. So, as a result, in case you have multiple machines, then this method becomes a cumbersome process as you need to calculate for each and every machinery. Then sometimes it becomes a very illogical approach in the sense that in it is well known that the expenses on repairs and maintenance increases as the asset becomes old. Thus, the total burden on the profit and loss account that is depreciation plus the repair expenses is more in the later years in comparison to the earlier years whereas it should be the other way around. So, as a result, it should be portioned more in the later years, whereas in this method, they are portioned more in the earlier years. Now, let us take a small question to understand that what accounting procedure needs to be followed for straight line method of depreciation. So, the question is, X Limited purchased a machinery on April 1st, 2014 for rupees 1 lakh whose life was expected to be 10 years. Its estimated scrap value at the end of the 10 years was 10,000. Now you have to find out the amount of depreciation to be charged to the profit and loss account every year and also calculate the rate at which the depreciation will be charged every year. Now let us proceed further. Now the calculation of the amount of depreciation would be the cost of the asset minus the scrap value divided by the estimated useful life of the machinery. So, the annual depreciation would be the cost is 1 lakh minus the scrap value that is 10,000 divided by the useful life of the asset which is 10 years. So, the amount turns out to be 90,000 divided by 10. So, 9,000 becomes a uniform amount, a consistent amount which needs to be charged to depreciation as on annual basis. The rate of depreciation would be the annual depreciation amount which we just calculated as 9000 divided by the cost of the machinery which is 1 lakh in our case and this has to be expressed as a percentage so multiply by 100. So, the rate of depreciation turns out to be 9 percent. Now, let us proceed further and take an example on the accounting methodology. So, Salman and Usman Ross acquired a machine on 1st July 2012 at a cost of rupees 70,000 and spent another 5,000 on its installation. The firm writes of depreciation at 10 percent on straight line method. The books are closed on 31st December every year and we are required to show the machinery and the depreciation account for the 3 years. So, this question will enable us to understand that how the accounting part has to be recorded in the financial books of accounts. So, here we would be preparing the machinery account and depreciation account to record our entries in both the ledger accounts. Now, let us start doing the question. First, we are required to calculate the annual amount of depreciation to be charged every year to your machinery and the depreciation account. The cost of the machinery as stated in the question is 70,000 rupees plus the cost of installation that becomes the total cost of the asset which is 5000 and 70,000 plus 5000 makes us the cost of the machinery to be 75,000. The rate of depreciation as defined is 10 percent. So, the annual depreciation would be 10 percent of this 75,000 which is 7500. So, for the next 3 years we would be charging 7500 because the question asks us to prepare the accounts for depreciation and machinery for the next 3 years. And since we are following the straight line method, 
So, the amount of depreciation of 7500 is going to remain a uniform, it is not going to change, it is going to be remaining the same for the next 3 years. So, now let us learn how to prepare the machinery and the depreciation account. So, machinery account is a ledger account with debit and credit side. So, the first journal entry that you will be making is on the date when you buy the asset. So, when you buy the asset, the procurement price is 70,000. So, the accounting entry becomes machinery account debited to bank account. So, as you can see in the machinery account on 1st July 2012 to bank account 70,000 and you are incurring another 5,000 for the installation. So, again machinery account debited to bank account in for the installation amount that is 5,000. Now, since depreciation is charged at the end of the year, so on 31st December 2012, we would be charging the depreciation. And since this machinery was purchased on 1st July, so in 2012, we would be providing the depreciation for only 6 months and not for complete 12 months because we have procured the asset on 1st of July. So, for 6 months, the amount would be 75,000 into the rate of depreciation that was 10 percent. So, multiply by 10 by 100 and multiply by 6 months so 6 by 12. So, the amount turns out to be 3750 and the accounting entry that we have made is depreciation account debited to machinery account and every year we need to close the books of account. So, we will close the machinery account by calculating the carried down balance which turns out to be the balancing figure between the debit and the credit side. So, 75,000 minus 3750, it gives us a carried down balance of 71,250, which becomes the now the opening balance for the next year. So, 2013, 1st January, we will carry forward the balance of 71,250 rupees to the debit side of the machinery as two balance balance brought down and again on 31st December we would be charging depreciation at the rate of 10 percent on the original cost. So, 75,000 into 10 by 100 which is 7500 and that will be charged for the complete 12 months and again we would be closing the books of accounts the machinery account on 31st December. So, again the balancing figure of 71,250 minus 7500 which gives us a balancing figure of 63,750 I and mean, we will close the accounting record. Same way for the third year because the question says that you have to prepare the machinery account for the next three years. So, again in 2014 the same procedure would be followed. We will bring the balance from the previous account which stands at 63,750. Again on 31st December we would be providing depreciation on the original cost at 10 percent which we have calculated as 7500 and we will close the books of accounts by calculating the carried down balance of 63750 minus the depreciation amount 7500 and we get a figure of 56250. So, this is how you will be preparing the machinery account and as you have seen that the amount of depreciation does not change, it remains same, it remains constant under the straight line method of depreciation. Now, we would also understand that how the depreciation account is to be prepared. Now, the accounting entry that we would be charging to depreciation would be the depreciation account debited to machinery account with the amount of depreciation that we are providing year by year to our machinery account. So, in 2012, the amount of depreciation was for 6 months and this has to be provided at the end of the year. So, on 31st December, our accounting entry would be depreciation account debited to machinery account. So, 3750 and this needs to be closed by transferring it to the profit and loss account. Since it, since it's an expense of revenue nature, so every year it has to be transferred to the profit and loss account so that we are able to ascertain our true profit and loss for every year. So, this would be transferred with the entry profit and loss account debited to depreciation account for the amount of 3750. Similarly, next year also, so 2013 again on 31st December, we would be charging a depreciation account 
with the amount of depreciation so provided in the machinery account for 7500 and again on the same day it will be transferred to the profit and loss account and the process keeps on repeating till the useful life of the asset. So, this is how the machinery and the depreciation account are prepared under the straight line method. Now, let us proceed further and understand the second important method of charging depreciation that is the diminishing balance method. Now, as the method says diminishing balance, so that means the balance calculated for depreciation or the amount of depreciation calculated every year keeps on diminishing, it keeps on reducing, it keeps on coming down. So, the amount does not remains constant, it keeps on declining as the year pass by. The amount of depreciation under the diminishing balance method is calculated as a fixed percentage of the diminishing value of the asset. So, in SLM or straight line method, it is calculated on the original cost of the asset. So, it remains constant. Whereas, under this method, the amount of depreciation is calculated as a fixed percentage of the diminishing value, the value which is there in the balance sheet or the book value of the asset. So, that is why since the amount keeps on reducing, it keeps on coming down. So, this method is also known as the reducing balance method or the written down value method because every time the depreciation amount is calculated on the written value or the book value of the asset and not on the original value of the asset. Now, let us take a small example. A machine was purchased on 1st January 2011 for 1 lakh with useful life of 10 years. After completing its useful life, the machine will be scrapped for rupees 4000. It is decided to charge depreciation on this machine at a rate of 10 percent per annum on diminishing balance method. So, you have to calculate the amount of depreciation for each year during the useful life of the asset. Now, let us understand how the calculation would be done for depreciation under the diminishing balance method. The cost of the asset is 1 lakh rupees and the rate of depreciation to be charged is 10 percent. So, in the first year that is 2011, the amount of depreciation would be 10 percent of the cost of the asset. So, 10 percent of 1 lakh turns out to be 10,000. Now, the value of the asset in 2012 would be 1 lakh minus the amount of depreciation that is 10,000. So, the value becomes 90,000 and we are going to charge 10 percent on the written down value or the book value which is 10 percent of 90,000, 9,000. Similarly, in the third year, the value of the asset will come down by 90,000 minus 9,000 which is 81,000 and you are going to charge at 10 percent. So, 10 percent of 81,000 comes out to be 8100 and likewise till the useful life of the asset. An important consideration to understand in this method is as you can see that the amount of depreciation keeps on coming down, it keeps on declining and it does not remain constant. What remains constant is the rate of depreciation that is being charged on the book value of the asset. Whereas, in the earlier method the amount of depreciation was constant that was not coming down or it was not changing, it remained constant till the useful life of the asset. Now, the merits of diminishing balance method is that it has an equal burden on profit and loss account. So, the productivity of asset is more, hence its contribution to profit is greater. The cost that is charged to the profit and loss account in terms of depreciation in the initial years is greater, whereas in the later years the depreciation charges are less as repairs and expenses are more. So, it is a more logical approach that in the initial years the depreciation is less whereas in the later years the repairs and expenses are more. Hence, the total burden that is depreciation plus repair and expenses is somewhat equal on the profit and loss account each year. But again it is also having certain limitations or demerits. First is that the asset cannot be completely written off. So, the amount of asset never becomes 0 or cannot be reduced to 0 when there is no scrap value. And it is of course, a more complex method add compared to the straight line method because under this the amount keeps on reducing, the rate of depreciation 
cannot be easily determined as the as the amount keeps on declining year after year now let us take a small example to understand again that how this written down value method is accounted in the books of accounts let us take this example wisdom enterprises purchases plant and machinery for 1 lakh on 31st october 2012 it decides to write off depreciation 20% per annum on written down value method on 1st january 2015 purchases additional machinery for 40000 we are required to prepare a machinery account up to the year ending 31st march 2015 and the accounting year here is taken from 1st april to 31st march so the uh, depreciation is to be provided not on 31st december but as per the accounting year which ends on 31st march so again we see that how the plant and machinery account would be prepared so on october 1st 2012 you are procuring the machinery for rupees 1 lakh so the entry becomes machinery account debited to bank account for 1 lakh rupees and then since the depreciation is to be charged on 31st march so on 31st march we provide the depreciation the rate of depreciation is already defined which is 20% but the calculation would be done for from october 1st to 31st march which gives us 6 months so we are using the machinery for 6 months in the first year so the amount of depreciation would also be calculated for 6 months so 1 lakh into 20 divided by 100 and for 6 months so multiply by 6 divided by 12 it gives us an amount of depreciation of 10000 and again every year these accounts needs to be closed so we calculate the carried down balance as the balancing figure between the debit and the credit side so 1 lakh minus 10000 gives us the carried down figure of 90000 now next year again on 1st april 2013 we bring forward the balance from the previous year and our balance in the previous year was to balance brought down 90000 and again we provide the depreciation on 31st march at 20% now not on the original cost but on the book value so 20% of 90000 which turns out to be 18000 so this becomes the amount of depreciation and again we close the books of accounts by calculating the balancing figure and we get a figure of 90000 rupees minus 18000 as the amount of depreciation which is 72000 now in the third year again we bring forward the uh, balance from the previous plant and machinery account so on 2014 first april the balance brought forward is 72000 and again in the same year on 1st january we are buying an additional machinery so again machinery account debited to bank account and the amount is 40000 now we have to calculate the depreciation for both the machinery the new machinery as well as our previous machinery and they are being used for different number of different uh, time period the first machinery is constantly used for the complete year whereas the second one which is procured only on 1st january is being put to use from january feb and march so for 3 months so accordingly depreciation amount would be calculated so again on the written down value of 20% on 72000 plus 3 months we are using for second machinery so 40000 for 3 months at the rate of 20% and you calculate the amount so 20% of 72000 plus 20% of 40000 for 3 months which turns out to be 16400 as a total amount of depreciation to be charged for both the machinery and again we close the books of accounts and we get the amount of 95600 and the same would be brought in 2015 for 1st april the same amount 95600 and now on this we would be charging an amount of 20% of 95600 which is 19120 and we calculate the carried down balance which is 76480 now once we have understood the accounting methodology of recording the depreciation calculation in our books of accounts next we learn about the distinction between how the two methods are different from one another so first is the straight line method and the diminishing balance method the basis of difference is in terms of calculation under straight line method depreciation is calculated on the original cost of the asset 
whereas under diminishing balance method depreciation is calculated on the original cost in the first year and on the written down value of the asset in the subsequent year so that is why the amount keeps on changing second basis in terms of amount of depreciation the amount of depreciation it remains constant and you've also understood and seen it in the example that the amount did not change because it was calculated on the original cost whereas in case of the diminishing balance method the amount of depreciation keeps on declining it keeps on reducing year after year the third basis is in terms of the value of the asset the book value of the asset under straight line method can be reduced to zero because every time you are calculating it on the basis of the original cost whereas in case of diminishing value method the book value of the asset never turns to zero it cannot be reduced to zero the last basis of distinction between the two methods is in terms of depreciation and repairs the combined cost on account of these two that is depreciation repairs in the straight line method is lower in the initial years and remains more or less equal or higher in the later years whereas in case of diminishing balance method the combined cost on account of depreciation and repairs it remains more or less equal throughout the useful or the effective life of the asset so these were the differences between the two methods that we have studied so in this part of depreciation we learnt about the two methods of charging depreciation namely the straight line method and the diminishing balance method what were the merits and the limitations of both these methods and how the two methods are different from one another we also learned about the accounting methodology involved under both the methods i am sure that you have understood the topic well the accounting procedures and the distinction uh well thank you so much